Well, hello, everybody. It is I, Gobby, and welcome to the Shed of Dread. Right then, let's get into it. Let's talk about Star Wars. But actually, no. Let's come to a conclusion here. We have two sets of Star Wars. We have Star Wars um, 1 to 6. Classics that way. Disney Star Wars. Everything after Rogue One picked up in the, that side. And Rogue One kind of sitting in the middle because Rogue One was a very rated, vastly underrated film. And at least they made the effort to try and make it fit the other six. But there you go. Any case. Then we got Disney Star Wars after Rogue One, where we've got uh, Solo, Force Awakens. Um, what's it? The, oh, what the hell's the name of that flipping film? Oh, God, it's that important. I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, um, the Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah, that. The Last Jedi. Um, it's I've obviously blocked that out of my mind because that was the one of the worst Star Wars films ever made until, of course, the rise of... Skywalker or Palpatine, as it is, came onto the scene and made it even worse. So, and then we got all the things on Disney Plus where we went in with series one of the Mandalorian, which let's be honest, quite enjoyed. I'm not gonna lie, he enjoyed the Mandalorian. And the reason I enjoyed the Mandalorian, it was good, safe, solid Star Wars. It was a character that knew you knew nothing about and therefore had no past things, so you could just enjoy the story and the character development, even though Grooku, um, you know, little um little yeah he came in which made the great for selling toys like this yeah he came into it um but it was okay then we got introduced to the book of boba fett which was okay it was, it was all right although the beginnings of it not making complete sense started to come in where for instance just a small one um he goes to visit the Sarlacc pit in Slave 1. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Slave 1. It's not Fire Spray Starship because we've got to change it because it might offend somebody because it's called Slave 1. It's called Slave 1. Fire Spray is its class. So, and if you think, all right, so what's there with Slavery? You're an idiot. Just jog on. Can't be bothered with you. Get in the bin. He goes there and the Sarlacc grabs it and almost pulls the ship in and he finally gets out. And, oh, yeah, hey. yeah, but the problem was in Return of the Jedi, uh, Lando fell into the pit and got grabbed by the Sarlacc, uh, and somehow it couldn't pull him in because Han Solo got him holding on to a stick that Han Solo was holding on to, which was held by the feet of Chewbacca. So how did the thing that couldn't pull one single human being into itself almost manage to pull an entire starship in? That was the start of the problems. Then we had season two, Mandalorian. It was okay. Made reference, introduced Boba Fett, blah, blah, blah. Everything was great. Sadly, that Cara Dune um, Gina Canaro had been sacked because uh, she dared have an opinion, that um, which I find quite funny. It was all about, if you remember back in the days, it was all about, um, you know, the Holocaust. Um, and Disney didn't accept that, even though Walt Disney was quite renowned for being a uh, Nazi sympathizer and not particularly liking Jews himself, which I think they're trying to like gloss over. But that's the simple historical truth of that. But in any case, we carry on. So we had that, and then we had Kenobi. Uh, we took uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and we took Darth Vader, and we destroyed their characters by doing stuff that literally meant that everything that happened in the last six films made no sense whatsoever. But, you know, lines that were said. And we've had this with the other show that I cover on my channel, Doctor Who, where the timeless child came along and then destroyed many, many wonderful statements and sentences and things that were made in the other show all the rest of the year because their thing made all that make no sense whatsoever. It's the way of the world, I guess, at this day. So we've 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 trudled along. Um, don't forget, we have also had Star Wars Rebels and Star Wars The Clone Wars, two animated series. Let's let's be honest, they're both really, really good. Quite enjoyed both of them. No problems with either of them. And then we come to the new stuff. So we're now we're going to get a, a trailer for Ahsoka, which is... Um, bringing in the cast from Rebels, hence why I mentioned it, good link in there, you see, professional, um, into the live action. But, of course, we're only focusing on the female members of Rebels because the force is female, remember, Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, and so we've we've got that. And also Mandalorian Episode 3, Season 3 has dropped, which now should really be renamed the uh, – Bo Katana series, because if you've noticed slowly but steadily, she's coming to the forefront and Mando's been pushed to the back because we've got to have another female hero. And the writing in that just is just a, an abomination. It's a lot of it. 
literally, it's very much akin to Doctor Who. No one actually proofreads any of the scripts because lots of things that happen make no sense at all. Isn't logical. No one knows. So, in any case, and then we're going to have The Acolyte, this wonderful, wonderful new show, The Acolyte. It's going to be great. So, let's listen to what some people on the uh, cast of The Acolyte have to say. I'll be down here in the corner and we'll join in as we, Anna, when we need to. Uh, you know, she's a, she's a powerful leader. She's a powerful leader. Yes, yes. <laughs> She's a powerful leader. Yes, yes. Uh, so you needed the validation, yeah, because, uh, and please note that this had quite a lot of people in here and only a few people are going, yay. Okay, so let's carry on. Uh, in a very woman-centered world, which I, I was very excited. Again, sounds like about seven people cheering because that's not what we want. Uh, and it's been proven time and time and time again that in no matter what series you do it in, people... Do, clearly don't want that anymore because kind of I feel like Star Wars is, is very like patriarchal so it was Star Wars is very patriarchal how all the powerful characters apart from you know apart from those on the Empire are women you know we'll, we'll just talk Ray and well Ray's just powerful because she is uh, Princess Leia Admiral Holder uh, Mon Mothra. I mean, you know, yeah, all the, Mon Mothra, uh, Mon Mothma, not Mothra. Mothra is a character, Godzilla. Dear Lord, I do apologize. Any case, so uh, how it's patriarchal, and also, let's be honest, for one, Disney can't tell you what a woman is anyway. In any case, you can't have a patriarchy when men are now pretending to be women and are actually winning all the awards and being awesome and everything that then means that real women are now being pushed back down so they can all praise the fake women. So your patriarchy doesn't exist anymore. But in any case, let's carry on. Kind of cool to have like this sort of woman-centered thing. Woman-centered thing. The quite interesting thing is if I can pause, if I can get back to where it was there. There's there's there's, <laughs> there's a guy in the corner just above where my picture is. Yeah. Uh, and the guy next to me, we were both looking as if well, one's looking at the camera as if to say, What the fuck? And the other one's going, Well, you can see by his face, he's genuinely he's 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 genuinely not very happy about that. And there was only like four or five people cheering. Uh that was it. Um I'm vastly more important interested in the legs of the ATST there. But what we're talking about here is just the ridiculousness showing that no one who is now writing for Star Wars has actually ever watched Star Wars, doesn't understand anything, has to make all the buzzwords. It has to be anti-patriarchal, even though, as I just said, they don't know what a woman is any case anymore. Um, it has to be all women. It has to be female empowerment. And then they'll go, well, why isn't anyone watching? Because not only are you doing that and alienating half your fan base because you don't know what you're talking about, you, you, people are just not interested because you just know when it's described as, and I shit you not, as frozen meat Star Wars, you know the level of shite you're going to get. Okay? It gets better, though, believe it or not, because then there was a little bit later on, there were some guys sitting there talking about the um, acolyte. And well, let's listen to what this genius had to say. A battle for power. Mm. I mean, the best parts about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. It depends on what side you're standing on, truly. You know what I mean? The, say, Right, did you hear that? There is no... In Star Wars, it depends on where you're standing. So, therefore, there's good and evil. Because if I'm standing on one side and I don't like the other one, I could see them as evil. And also, before and then that's just that little bit where it depends on where you're standing. Well, that means good and evil still exist. But then to turn around and say Star Wars has no good and evil in it, the whole fucking premise of the first six films was about good versus evil. The first three prequel films, I know some people don't like them. I do. I know they're a bit annoying in places. But the thing is, the whole story of episodes one, two, and three is the slide down of a good child into the evil of the dark side of the force. Good and evil. Empire, evil, rebellion, good. But using his own words, but depending on where you're standing. As if somebody is an empire sympathizer, the rebellion are evil and we're good. 
Yes, it, the whole thing is about good and evil. The rebellion against, uh, you know, against the Galactic Empire. Yeah, light against the dark. Sith against Jedi. It's all about good versus evil. It's an allegory of World War Two. It's good against bad. If you are sitting there saying that it's now good and evil in Star Wars, you've never fucking watched any of it. And if you have, you're that dense oil, you didn't get the storyline. And this is Star Wars. This is why I, I, I have been saying on Twitter, Star Wars is dead. I'm wrong. Star Wars isn't dead. Disney Star Wars is dead. It's dying. And if you're going to get a show where it's all about the female-centric, it's anti-patriarchal, and there is no good and evil, because if you've noticed recently, not just in Star Wars, but in films and TV in general, we don't have good versus evil anymore. We have, you know, we should feel sorry for the villain. Because he's got this, you know, no, the, the whole idea is all stories are great when you have a good thing against the bad thing. That's that's what makes these stories awesome. That's what's made so many stories brilliant. Now where you've got to feel sympathy for the bad guy because he's had a bad upbringing or something. Just, just there is like this fascination. The kind of big fascination in idiotic Star Wars fans is the grey Jedi, the one who sort of sits in the middle. Well, that's a funny thing because if you're left wing orientated or even far right orientated, the thing in the middle isn't important. It doesn't exist because you've either got to be one or the other. So we have a a fallacy, a hypocrisy where people on the left saying there's no good thing as good and evil, but then going, but if you're right wing or don't agree with us, you're evil. You're this, that, pho is ism, phobic, whatever. So I don't, it's the oh, mind fuck of an idiot, basically. So we've got all that, and then we had a slew of new Star Wars films. Ryan Johnson was going to be given a new trilogy of films, which went the way of the dodo. There was going to be Rogue Squadron. There was going to be this. There was going to be that. And there was going to be all the things. Well, in any case, let's just listen to the Dark Lord herself and what she thinks about things. For all the movies that we did hear about today, we do know that there, have, there are some that have been shelved. Well, they haven't been shelved. Oh. Most things... No, 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 Kathleen, they have been shelved. You've got rid of the directors uh, because they wouldn't and didn't agree with your uh, opinions, et cetera, et cetera. But in any case, uh, if you, you want to call them shelved, I think I'll call them um, gone. In any case, let's carry on. They have been shelved. Development is a complicated long-term process. So development is a complicated and long-term thing, except we can – so why do you keep – rolling out piles of shit over and over and over again, Kathleen. Hmm? Just out of curiosity, because there is, it looks like there's no development at all because you can't even read the scripts to realise that things don't make sense. And, and, and if you want to know what that is, it's um, the last Mandalorian episode where the, the, the planet they went to couldn't have a standing army because the New Republic wouldn't allow them. Okay, whatever. Uh, so they hired privateers as the Mandalorians, but the Mandalorians couldn't eat the city because then there'd be a standing army. Any case, let's carry on. Mm -hmm. Some people, we were dealing with scheduling. Yeah. Because obviously, really talented people are working. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go through and look at all the all the all the producers that are or have been associated with things for Star Wars, Kathleen, uh, you'll find they're not doing anything. They weren't doing anything before, and they're not doing anything now. So they're not scheduling anything. But in any case, let's carry on. So we don't. It, it's often not a shelving. It's it's just is it ready? Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, you keep releasing stuff that's a pile of shit. As I just said, that you don't even no one's even bothered to like proofread the scripts, Kathleen. So is it ready in your book now? If you look at what you've produced recently, is it ready? Yes, it is ready because it's we just can't be asked. Just get it out there uh, and let's just destroy some more legacy characters. Yes. So I'm thinking about kind of projects like Rogue Squadron yeah. and Kevin Feige's project. So, right, Rogue Squadron, uh, Kathleen, you 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 got rid of the the director and told her that the, the the film's never happening. It's not shelving. That's getting rid of, and that's for Kevin Feige. Well, let's just hear what you have to say, and let's just prove what a lying piece of shit you really are, Kathleen. And no, no, these are your words, so uh, you can't deny it. Could those still see well, the light of day? Kevin Feige's project was something announced in 
the press or I suppose yeah, yeah. fandom. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing that nothing ever got developed. Right. We never discussed an idea. We did, you know, as everybody knows, Kevin's a huge Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if he did come up with something, I would be all ears. So there was, it was just the fandom who came up with Kevin Farhees, um working in Star Wars. It was, it, it, it was us and the press really was it. So, um, this particular bit here, then, uh, with the close of Skywalker Saga, Kathy is pursuing a new era in Star Wars t storytelling. And knowing what diehard fan Kevin is, it made sense for these two extraordinary producers to work to on a Star Wars film together, said Alan Horn, co-chair and chief creative officer of Walt Disney Studios in a statement on Wednesday, which was a while ago. So the head of Disney goes, ah, oh, well, they're great. We're, that's why we've got them both working on a film. But no, no, it was all made up because, of course, this never happened either. Did it, Kathleen? Hard Star Wars fan, owner of multiple Hasbro Jabba's sail barges, and president of Marvel Studios will now be able to add Star Wars producer to his list of achievements. That's right. With the close of the Skywalker saga, Kevin Feige is set to co-produce an upcoming Star Wars movie with Kathleen Kennedy in a new era of Star Wars storytelling. Star Wars is... So, it was the media that made it up. It was the fandom that made it up. Even though, as it says uh, here, uh, your... Um, co-chair and chief creative officer of Walt Disney said that you're going to make a film together. <sighs> Star Wars, as in Disney Star Wars, is dead. It's not going to make any money. We now have a conversation that has been announced that Daisy Ridley is coming back as Rey Palpatine, not a Skywalker. You can't just go, I'm a Skywalker, and that's how it works. She is no blood of a Skywalker in her whatsoever. She's a Palpatine. That was well and truly covered in all of the films, but it doesn't matter because they were all sacks of shit any case. But no, bring her back because Daisy Ridley has done what since she finished in Star Wars? Yeah, exactly. So she's come back because that's where she's the only place she can get cash. It's the only place that she can get work. And everybody's going, oh, no, it's, it's, it's going to be great. It wasn't. It doesn't matter how you try and portray it. When Ray Palpatine was being trained, she had skills because she did. She did zero training. She was stronger than Luke Skywalker, who was at that moment in time the most powerful Jedi in the universe. But, of course, that was good enough. She had to have superpowers. She had to lift rocks. And then at the end of it, she just went, I'm a Skywalker. And everybody went, yay, Ray Skywalker. No, it doesn't work. The simple truth of the matter is you can bring her back. Please, 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 Star Wars. Please, please, please bring it back. Because it will just hasten your demise. I will be so happy to watch all three of these films because, no offense, you'll give me tons and loads of other YouTube creators loads of stuff to tear into. Because Ray. Palpatine is without doubt the most disliked character next to Rose Tico in Star Wars, Disney Star Wars creations. It's not good. But of course, you'll just keep doing this. You'll just keep saying the force is female and then blaming people when they won't come and watch your show and you'll go, it's because you're sexist. It's because you're misogynist. It's because you're part of the patriarchy. No, it's because your films and your TV shows are shit and no one wants to watch them. It's as simple as that. But hey, what do I know? There's a comment section down below. Please let me know what you think. You can always, as it says down at the bottom, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see some more. Oh, and by the way, that's me done. Now do yourself a favor. Get out of my shit.
What I tell y'all about coming in my shed?